Welcome to uh, Quadrant Centennial Guest Lecture. Today, uh, Professor uh, Maxim Konchevich will give a talk. And President of the Kias, uh, Professor Jagan Chehil, will give some uh, uh, welcoming remarks. Um, good morning and good afternoon. Um, Kias is having the 25th anniversary this year. In celebration of the anniversary, we are holding the Quadrant Centennial Kias Lectures. We are very happy that Professor Maxim Konchevich has accepted our invitation. When Professor Konchevich was at UC Berkeley, he said, mathematics is a kind of independent and very pleasurable universe. I hope all of you will find that his lectures are also very pleasurable today and tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Th thank so you very let much. Let me just give a, give a brief uh, introduction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Maxim Konchev, he's a professor at IHS, and he, he works on uh, some geometric aspect of mathematical physics, uh, most notably in knot theory, quantizations, and mirror symmetry. And uh, he won uh, uh, numerous prizes, like Agni Purankara Prize in 97, Fields Medal in 98, and Crawford Prize in 2008, and the Shaw Prize and Fundamental Physics Prize in 2012, and the Breakthrough Prize in Mathematics in uh, 2014. So he will give a lecture on uh, Bohr's Novikov theory for holomorphic one forms today. Please welcome him and uh, please uh, share your screen and uh, start the lecture, please. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, just before sharing the screen, I want to say again a couple of works. It's uh, very glad to kind of virtually come to Seoul, uh, to, to Korea, yeah. In fact, I was, last time I was in Korea, a little bit just before Kia, KS was founded, maybe 27 years ago. Yeah, so unfortunately I have not uh, been in KS physically, hope it will, sometime we'll be able to travel. Okay, so I'll now share my lecture uh, screen. And um, uh, so I will talk about uh, some story which is uh, started by Sergei Norikov about late 80s. I didn't participate in this, but and uh, speak about some new interesting twist of the story. More notion of the for holomorphic one forms. Yeah, so I'll just start very gently about what is classical Morse theory. I think most people are know, but just to remind you the basic setup. So the, uh, the most fundamental fact is the Morse lemma. It's very easy fact proven by Marston Morse in the early 20s, last century. But it was kind of known, I think, to people uh, <laughs> well before in certain sense, that uh, it's a classification of simple critical points of function. It's a very basic fact. If you have a germ of C, real C infinity function or at point on and dimension manifold, and uh, I can see the point that this critical point when derivative vanishes, because otherwise you can change by coordinates to be a local, just one of local coordinates. So we said it's a critical point. And then uh, such as the second derivative, which is well defined because first derivative vanishes, uh, to be in non degenerate quadratic form. Uh, uh, so it means that second uh, Taylor coefficient is non degenerate quadratic form. Then we say that P is a more critical point. And the claim that one can uh, find local coordinates such that uh, f will be just its quadratic form and no high terms. And because we know all quadratic form real variables has uh, sum of squares, maybe signs. So we can put in this form minus sum of first r squares and plus sum of the rest squares of the rest variables plus a constant which is the value of fu function at your critical point. This uh, number of negative squares is called the Morse index of the critical point. Yeah, and then uh, this generic C infinity function, if you choose this kind of at random, has only more singularities. There's no more complicated uh, singularities. Uh, okay. Uh, now let's choose the remaining metric near, near my point. And then we get a gradient flow given by this gradient vector field. 
so using metric, we transform one forms to vector fields. And, uh, and for this flow, we probably can use a standard flat metric. Here it says that flow, it's, it'll be rescaling variables x and rescaling variables r. You, you'll have a stable manifold. Uh, so you consider a set of points in the neighborhood of points p, such that you apply the flow in positive time and go to plus infinity, then the limit will be your point. In particular, point p is the example of such thing. And in this uh, basic example, when you get minus sum of squares and flat metric, you consider po um, this stable manifold, you consider points when all non uh, kind of non-trivial coordinates will be x1 up to xr, could be zero. And xr plus one xn are zero. Now, so you see that's a really manifold, a priori it's just subset, and it's diffeomorphic to uh, Euclidean space of dimension r, where r is a Morse index. And similar one have an unstable manifold. So you change the direction over time and it will be like you change f to minus f. So it will be a second group of coordinates the plane now the role. So consider points which uh, when I apply flow in negative time goes to minus infinity then approach your point p. It's another manifold of complementary dimension and then intersect transversely at point p. Yeah, so one can make simple picture, uh, uh, like in dimension two, uh, one ha can have index zero, one and two. So sum of squares, square minus square and minus sum of squares. And then here in the first case, you get the stable manifold at just one point and unstable manifold at the whole neighborhood. Here you get stable manifold, it's two red li lines together with middle point, which form a copy of R and unstable manifold is two blue rays together with, with middle point, which for another copy of R. And in the third case, everything is a stable manifold. So get full neighborhood plus point R. Now it's, it's a very simple basic picture of the gradient flow. Mm. And now what goes on? Mm. Yeah, so must and Morse inverted the things for some applications in topology and for global manifolds. In fact, he has infinite dimension manifolds. But even for finite dimension manifolds, it's interesting. Uh, so suppose now X is a compact C infinity manifold of some given dimension N and F will be a, C infi a real C infinity function on your manifold. And let's assume that function is generic. So it has only finitely many critical points. I just enumerate them in some order, P1 up to P capital N, and all of which are Morse. And then uh, we can first start with any metric on G. Uh, then we have global stable unstable manifold defined in the same way. You can see the gradient flow, you can see the points which are attracted to point PI or uh, attracted in negative time. And this will be locally closed submanifolds, and they will be diffeomorphic still to Euclidean spaces. They will not close subspaces, it will be like cells. Uh, so we are, are more synthesis. So it looks that you have a cell decomposition. You get you decompose your space is a joint union, let's say, of stable manifolds for all points of some open cells. But in general, it could be a cell decomposition because the boundary of uh, smaller dimensional cells can touch high dimensional cells, which uh, are not allowed in maximatics is double complexes. But it's okay if the metric is chosen generically. So we, not only function is generic, but the metric is generic. If the metric is generic, in kind of sense of bare category, uh, then uh, stable and unstable manifold for any two different critical points intersect each other transversely. Uh, and uh, people say that in this case, the flow, uh, it's actually property of the flow, uh, that locally it looks like gradient flow for Morse function, but then you get uh, in transversality, uh, it's some generalist property and it's called Morse phase uh, uh, smell vector field, which generates such a flow independent because it's come from function and metric. Okay, and uh, when you have such transversality, then it, uh, automatically your 
uh, manifold will have a cell decomposition with open cells, let's say stable manifolds associated to each point. Because for any point on your manifold, you apply the flow and it gradient flow, the value function increase and it's, it's unavoidable to approach one of critical points. Yeah, so it's every point lies at least exactly one stable manifold. Then we can form a chain complex. Uh, namely, um, find a kind of linear combinations with integer coefficients of cells. Yeah, I, I just uh, skipped some technical details. Uh, for example, here, uh, uh, when you have open cells, it's not really cell complex because cell complex should be a map of closed disk. Uh, one should extend to the map of closed disks. It's a little bit of bend in the neck, but still is a cell complex. Okay, so we get this uh, uh, chain complex sort of a cell complex. And if you choose orientation on each cell, then we choose kind of basis of the cell complex. It will be free abelian group is uh, uh, generated by cells of given Morse index, index zero, one up to Morse index n. Yeah, and then we have a differential in this uh, chain complex. In differential, uh, uh, it's given by some matrix. Uh, because we have here we have a basis, we have matrix coefficients, and matrix coefficients is associated to a pair of critical points, uh, such that more synthesis are adjacent. Uh, so, more indices like two and three, so difference is one. And in this case, the intersection of saddle and stable and stable manifolds is one dimensional, and so you get it will be actually trajectory of a gradient flow called saddle connection connecting to gradient point. So you get finitely many subtle connections connected to gradient point, but it's because it's intersection of two, uh, uh, two uh, transversal intersecting submanifold, it is there is some uh, sign coming from the story, and uh, the matrix coefficients of differentials will be sum over all subtle connections of signs which comes from orientations. Okay. Uh, so what uh, this complex calculate? It's called Morse complex of function uh, with given metric. It's just homology of x with integer coefficients. And uh, in particular, it implies Morse inequality. If you know rank of cohomology group, like you know, like for example, third cohomology group is of rank 10, then you know you have, should have at least three 10 critical points contributing to uh, this complex in, uh, uh, degree three, and this points should be of index three. Yeah, so it's some gives some kind of low bounds on critical points for arbitrary functions. And here's the picture. It's actually I'm not sure that it's totally realistic picture. You can imagine like manifold your two-dimensional torus, and you get projection to vertical line as, a, as your function. You get three critical points like bottom with minimal form. Uh, top we have maximum we get to saddle points is more index one so you get more synthesis zero one one and two so you get four critical points and dimension of homology is rank of hom homology is also four because you have zero homology of rank one first homology of rank two and second homology of rank two so in this case uh, this um, mm, differential in Morse complex is zero so the complex has the same dimension as, as homology. And uh, but what happens just if consider two points of uh, uh, adjacent uh, uh, more synthesis like zero and one, uh, there will be two uh, subtle connections, but uh, they count with sign, this opposite sign plus and minus, so the total sum vanishes. So here I get did something a bit wrong. Yeah, yeah so get, um, mm, so I think it's a wrong picture. I should draw something slightly different. Okay. Uh, mm, yeah. Okay. So it's a typical picture what, of what is going on. Now I go to Morse Novikov theory. Uh, so the gradient flow mm, depends on function only through its differential. Differential is a closed uh, real C infinity one form. And as denoted by alpha differential of f, and uh, g is a bilinear form on tangent space. You take inverse, you take 
inverse uh, operator from maybe cotangent space to tangent space, then apply to alpha, you get a vector field. Yeah, so one can write this formula for gradient field in terms of one form. So you see that it depends only, on, uh, yeah, it's kind of clear if you add to function a constant, the gradient flow will be the same. So it depends on one form. And then in early 80s, uh, uh, Sergei Novikov uh, proposed a program to stagger gradient flow associated with a general closed one form, alpha, not, not differential of a function. Yeah, so his motivation was coming from uh, um, um, some physics, I think, uh, uh, related to, to magnetism and but there are really many many applications and it appears in many questions in mathematical physics and in theoretical physics um, yeah for example if you even uh, in mechanics and celestial mechanics uh, eventually when you get some quasi periodic motions like planets in the, around the sun then a the certain approximation to redu reduce to this uh, force of some closed one form okay yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, so uh, in this theory, uh, uh, what are uh, critical points of uh, one form? You, just, you say that critical points are zeros. Uh, critical points of functions are in this language zeros of one form. You get gradient flow, and uh, there is kind of analogous Morse lemma for generic closed one form, because locally one form is differential of function, you know, that it has only more singularities, so it's locally differential of Morse function. Yeah, so uh, uh, one can consider this mm, 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 flow for one form. Mm, yeah, in general, one can ask the question, what is the manifold with one for, with the Morse closed one form? Uh, it's kind of very easy uh, result in deformation theory. If you try to deform a little bit uh, your pair of manifold and one form, uh, then you get a universal, uh, uh, finite dimensional smooth universal family. So people say that deformation theory is unobstructed. And this universal uh, um, deformation, uh, domain of universal deformation, it's, it's actually an open domain in certain finite dimensional affine space. A finite dimensional affine space is the first homology of pair, manifold and the finite set of zeros, with coefficients in real numbers. And you associate to your manifold and one form, it just element vector in this vector space, this, this class of one form, you can integrate by any closed loop or pass connected zeros, get some numbers. And uh, uh, th uh, this fact that if local deformation of a manifold with one form are this, uh, determined uniquely by the deformation of this class, it's analogous to uh, another very easy result in uh, geometry called Moser theorem, uh, which says that if you consider compact manifold and try to um, uh, see the set of symplectic structures of up to diffeomorphism, then we get a, a domain in, oh, sorry, this, in, in an affine space where this, again, period map, you are associated to symplectic form, it's cohomology class, which is class in second uh, cohomology of Y and R. Here it's first cohomology and second cohomology. So you see that we have a kind of very parallel uh, story and one can see this Series of manifolds with closed one forms is a kind of primitive, uh, kind of undeveloped relative of symplectic topology. So, because first homology is simply the second homology. Uh, and uh, in symplectic topology, people uh, have still an unanswered question. If you try to consider kind of not a local deformation, but global uh, families of symplectic manifolds, it's, uh, it's an interesting stack or maybe higher stack. Uh, uh, and uh, the structure of it, which, which is very unclear, because uh, you treat you, you're interested not only on isomorphism class symplectic manifolds, but homotopy types of groups of the symplectomorphisms, which jumps if you change class of symplectic form. And here is the same story. One can see the kind of global stack of such pairs manifold is one form, and what goes on globally, it's absolutely unclear. Yeah, so if, if uh, somebody found symplectic topology is too complicated, I, I suggested to study this 
<laughs> topology of closed one forms as a kind of baby version. Okay. Uh, anyhow, um, so return to this uh, 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 gradient flow for one forms. As in the case of functions, we have both stable and unstable manifolds, and they again differ morphic to Euclidean spaces, but it's no longer cell decomposition at all. And there is the following this embeddings of stable and unstable manifolds, which are Euclidean spaces, are not a merchant of locally closed manifolds, but images are kind of wrapped everywhere. They everywhere uh, it, everywhere dense, typically everywhere dense images. So you get some kind of like leaves of foliation. And <coughs> also when you try to define more complex, you intersect stable and unstable manifolds for different uh, critical points. And here, if consider stable and unstable manifolds are associated to different zeros, they intersect each other transversely, but if metric is generic, it's again, one can prove the same result, but the intersection it could be, if, could have infinitely many points and infinitely many components of appropriate dimension and it will be everywhere dense. So imagine like two transversal uh, yeah, uh, fellations. Yeah, so one cannot really make a, a sense of this um, differential is the most complex because sum is infinite. So how could define matrix coefficients? It's, you cannot say sum of infinitely many plus minus ones. And what Noikov proposed in, um, in early 80s, it just the following, it's, you count settled connection with certain weights which go to zero. And as such to weight to settle connection, uh, which is some line connecting to a point, like t to the integral of one form of this L, which will be strictly positive number. And, and then you can try to think is if t is very small positive real numbers, you get something which is very close to zero and this, the whole sum will be con convergent. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so it says it's, this exponent is strictly positive and there are finitely many subtle connections for which integrals bounded from above by a given constant. Yeah, so one can hope that this thing is convergent, but uh, the convergence is not proven yet. It's very, very difficult and fine question and actually I'll discuss tomorrow some related stuff. It was conjectured originally by Noikov, but it's not proven and not clear whether it's true or not. Even. And so how to handle this convergence issues? So Noiko suggested to treat this variable T as a formal variable, formal parameter. And now you consider real powers of formal parameter. It's still something which you can, can add and multiply such things formally. So we introduce field which is called now Noiko field. You consider all linear, infinite linear combinations of real powers of this form parameter into symbols with coefficients, say rational numbers, and this uh, LJ is kind of lengths or whatever integrals of one form uh, uh, numbers, maybe finitely many of them are negative, almost all of them are positive, and they goes to plus infinity. Such series, like Loran series, one can add and multiply and, and divide, so it's a form a field. Uh, yeah, in sense, like in Laurent series, you allow real powers instead of integer powers. And here, the, the coefficients are use rational numbers in order to, to get to B field, but you can replace Q by any other field, like finite field or Z mod P, yeah, because for this more than equalities, sometimes when in, uh, apply cohomology with coefficients and positive characteristic, not zero characteristic. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we get, um, this uh, field, or maybe several versions of different characteristic, and yeah, uh, so this Novik field solve your problem of convergence. We get well-defined complex, mm, and and one can easily prove that cohomology doesn't depend on change metric. And uh, what is it? It's uh, it's, it was known from the very early days. It's homology of Snorf complex. It's actually a homology of your manifold with coefficients in the rank one local system with coefficients in Snorf field. So, representation of fundamental group to invertible elements in Snorf field. And this local system, it's just canonical local system associated to this one form alpha. Um, it's the uh, fiber of this local system. It's 
canonical trivialized at each every point of x. And what you should specify is a holonomy like along any path. You can depending on the homotopy, just choose any smooth part. Uh, and uh, take holonomy is just monomial t to the real number, which is integral of one form of the path. Then if compose path, you get uh, uh, sum of integrals and product of monomials. Yeah, so it's, it's you get this canonical local system, and it's and it's uh, homology. It's homology of coefficients. This is local system. Let, let's me explain this uh, description of this isomorphism. Use Poincare, we use Poincare duality for each critical point. Each critical point, together with uh, choice of this orientation of this stable manifold. It gives kind of infinite chain because this stable manifold is everywhere dense. You skip, uh, but it's infinite chain with integer coefficients, but also in coefficients this local system because my local system is realized at every point, in particular point P, P, I or PJ, yeah. Uh, uh, it's realized and then I extend this trivialization to by parallel transport to this whole contractible and stable manifold. Yeah, so it's formally we can see it's uh, like you. Uh, infinite chain, it does really make sense. And suppose I get a finite linear combination of these chains, this coefficient is not field, which is close on the differential. So it's uh, representative of the class of this morse novikov complex. Now I want to define, um, uh, so I want to interpret, identify with certain homology class with coefficients local system. But I defined through Poincare duality through the pairing with homology class of the dual local system uh, twisted by the orientation bundle and with opposite uh, degree. Uh, yeah, so so how uh, how you represent homology class in the dual system? Now I don't use this, any of these wild infinite chains. I just use usual finite chains, choose finite generic cell decomposition with finitely many piecewise smooth cells choose trivialization orientation of one line bundle for each cell and choose any close representative. So it'll be finite combination of cells, again with coefficients in my noico field. And if I choose the things generically, so the generic is main word in my lecture, uh, um, this cell decomposition, then the intersection of the stable manifolds with this finite close uh, cells are transversal. And in particular, we get infinitely many intersection points each intersection point gives a contribution in the field, but uh, the, the, they start with the smaller, larger and larger powers of T. And then the whole sum will be convergent addict topology. So you get well-defined element of Novikov field. It's, you get some number, element of Novikov field. And this intersection number depends only on the classes of the things and gives a non degenerate pairing. Yeah, so it's here the kind of small cartoon, what is going on, you get some um, point PI, then you get a stable manifold, which is kind of wraps infinitely many times. Then you get some finite chains, this green stuff, and the intersections are uh, countably many intersections, but uh, each intersec uh, high, high intersection points will contribute to uh, very large integrals of alpha and will be very large powers of t. So you get some convergence sum. Yeah, so the whole thing, it's uh, for many years people developed a story in this language, but uh, I, I propose to modify it a little bit. Um, uh, instead of this canonical local system, a source transform, consider other local systems which are, in a sense, close to this. Yeah, so, okay, so let's fix the generic metric giving uh, transverse intersecting the stable and unstable manifolds. Uh, now I want to replace this canonical system with any local system is coefficients in any non archimedean field is the relation in real numbers, not any non field, it could be periodic numbers, whatever. And with the property that this cohomology class and first cohomology coming from this local system uh, by the following way satisfy some property. So, um, uh, so loc the local system is um, classified by first cohomology with coefficients in vertebral element in my non archimedean field. The evaluation it gives a homomorphism of invertible elements to real numbers. You apply this thing, you get class in H1 first commodity group is real numbers. And this class in first commodity group should lie in certain convex cone, uh, depending on vector field Xi. And this convex cone contains alpha uh, and is described in the following way. You can see the uh, classes of other closed differential forms 
uh, set the pair positively with vector field outside of zeros of vector, vector field. It definitely holds for alpha, but it could be for different forms. It's open condition. Uh, one says it's kind of size gradient like for alpha tilde. And the same um, um, convergence will hold if you get uh, uh, cl uh, class alpha, uh, class alpha tilde instead of alpha and mm, 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 so you get many, many local systems for which you can uh, write uh, morse of complex. So one can say this kind of algebraically, it's, it's, it's just really formalism, it's nothing uh, uh, serious goes on. Uh, first, one can consider, if you consider all local systems, uh, and for definiteness, because local systems are up to acting rescaling, you consider local system trivialized at base point, so choose some base point not necessarily zero, any point of your manifold. Uh, then this local system, uh, then space of local systems, it's the first homology group with what algebraists called GM, multiplicative group, kind of GL1, uh, multiplicative group of integer numbers. Uh, so it's homomorphism for the finitely um, um, abelian group, first homology group to GL1 is coefficient in any ring in a sense. Yeah, so the first homology group is is uh, finitely generated group. It's a free group plus some finite torsion, and uh, when you consider homomorphism of JL one, you get algebraic varieties, which is this uh, uh, formally can be uh, so it's a product of product of algebraic tori and some finite group schemes, and the algebra functions of this algebraic variety is a group ring. Uh, you have a billion group, consider formal finite linear combination of this group with integer coefficients. Okay, now so it's just a formula that gets this finite algebraic variety and if you consider fixed index R and consider R's homology group with coefficients in, in this universal family, you get module over this ring or uh, algebraic geometry say you get algebraic coherent shift on algebraic variety and uh, it's actually interesting coherent shift. It's not really vector bundles can drop in some uh, uh, certain algebraic sub varieties. For example, if, it may, if, if your six, it's not really manifold with a valve bundle, but it's more or the same. You can see the complement to a knot. And then the variety is, uh, the first homology just has a rank one. It's the variety, it's the GM or fine line minus zero. And this coherent shift, it's um, actually it's zero almost everywhere except finitely many points and these points are zeros of Alexander polynomial. Yeah, so this thinks it's kind of, this shift is generalized Alexander polynomials for arbitrary finite cell complex. And what morse Novikov complex gives us? Uh, it's kind of uh, really formality. It gives analytic complex of vector bundles in a non-Archimedean tube domain corresponding to open convex cone. Uh, Uh, ah, so get analytic complex of vector bundles, uh, analytic in sense of non-Archimedean geometry instead of complex numbers you use uh, convergence of non-Archimedean series. And um, the cohomology of this complex of vector bundles certain domain in uh, some torus is analytification of algebraic mm, coherent shift are universal, which happens to be bundle in this domain. Yeah, so it's really nothing but formalism. It's um, it's nothing deep goes on, and uh, if it's this language of non archimedean geometry, and even non archimedean fields is irrelevant, what is going on? We, uh, in a certain sense, we deal with some infinite linear combination of Laurent monomials and several variables. Monom variables will be coordinates on this variety of local systems, and monomials should belong to certain strict convex cone and real vector space. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so it's uh, all this language on the geometry is just decoration for, for this simple fact that there are some strict convex cones. And uh, if one want to have actual, uh, yeah, we get some series uh, in, in many variables with integer coefficients. Uh, and if one want to prove 
one can uh, prove some exponential upper bound of this coefficients of this number of subtle connections in Novik of uh, conjecture, then we get analytic isomorphism and one get actual tube domain over complex numbers. So I get C star to some power and I get some domain given by inequalities by logarithms of numbers and it will be more familiar subject. Yeah. What is important in both and Morse and Morse Novik of generalization, the differential is defined only for the generic metric. And there are walls of codimension one in the infinite dimensional space of metrics along with this differential jumps. So this is um, a really very unpleasant situation. You don't have any can canonical complex. You get many, many complexes of the same homology. Now uh, I go to this main point. Uh, what happens in the special case when one, my one form is a real part of a holomorphic one form when I start with some kind of complex situation. Now, so I assume that X now is a complex manifold endowed with a closed holomorphic one form, A, C, I just don't distinguish from real form. So the real form we denote just by alpha, it's a real, real closed one form. And if I assume that my holomorphic form has more singularity in the holomorphic sense, so, so it locally looks like differential of sum of squares of complex coordinates, m is a number of complex coordinates, half of real dimension, then the real part is also has more singularities with both of the same in Morse index m, because zi square is x i square plus y i minus y i squared, yeah? If you, uh, real part of this square, it's x square minus y square. So you see that I get exactly half of variables in goes in with negative signs. And you see that all all uh, points have the same Morse index. So there's no room for, for differential at all. Differential should increase Morse index by one, or decrease by, by one. Yeah, so the Morse, Morse differential vanishes. But still, uh, it doesn't say that you have canonical isomorphism between Morse complex with zero differential and homology. Mm. The next point is uh, really more dramatic. Uh, if you choose any Hermitian metric, um, not just remaining metric on Keller manifold, but not necessarily Keller metric, just pointwise compatible with complex structure, it's a very weak condition, uh, then there will be no subtle connection at all. If the, the, the certain condition, which is a new condition, which is in the whole, which, which is purely homological, has nothing to do with the metric. The condition is the following. If you take any path connecting, connecting two um, zeros and integrate your complex one form, you never get a positive real number. Uh, it's actually a, a generic condition. Uh, uh, so let's, let's me explain why if you, this condition holds, then you don't have subtle connections. Uh, if you consider any gradient line, uh, just point wise, you see that imaginary part of uh, your one form vanishes identical in a gradient line. And then the integral of, of one form is has positive real part because real parts has strictly positive for gradient line and vanish imaginary part. So it's integral with strictly positive real number, which contradicts this assumption. And the assumption is really generic. If you put form at, at, at random, or kind of come to class at random, it will never hold. Yeah, and then uh, if you get this uh, cohomological assumption, uh, the claim that we obtain a canonical basis of middle homology, there's no other homology with coefficients in, let's say, canonical system uh, uh, associated to the real part of one form, labeled by zeros of my one form and represented by infinite chains, which can be called left symbols. Moreover, the same uh, thing holds for all local systems, like in, uh, in certain non incriminating tube domain associated with this vector field uh, for which you use Hermitian metric G, gradient field. Um, I recall there's some, some certain cone and then we get some tube domain. And then we get uh, analytic trivialization or, or on this tube domain of algebraic vector bundle, which is restriction of coherent shifts on, the, on my uh, algebraic torus. Yeah, so get many tube domains on which of them they have trivialization and actual trivialization coincides on the common inter intersection. If I change metric uh, continuously, there's still, uh, uh, this uh, uh, isomorphism will still stay the same. 
Yeah, so you get many, many cones associated uh, with different Hermitian matrix. And the basic question, what is the union of these cones if you change it, uh, uh, take all possible Hermitian matrix? It will be kind of like describe maximal possible tube domain. And uh, kind of, an, uh, but the question about cones, it's really interesting. For example, is this union convex? I have really no idea. Yeah, so there's interesting question about in kind of real geometry coming from this thing. Okay, and what happens if this uh, cohomological condition doesn't hold? The solution is very simple. Those cohomological conditions that all integrals are not positive real numbers. You just rotate your one form by mm, some generic angle, theta. And the trouble appears only for countably many theta, namely, you start from original one form, consider all possible integrals of uh, of this homology classes. It's a finite rank lattice. You get countably many numbers in C. And uh, some of these numbers are non-zero complex numbers. They have and they have certain arguments called cities. Uh, these are Stokes directions. And for this Stokes direction, we get a trouble. Otherwise, as the integrals after rotation never get positive real numbers. So you get countably many Stokes rays. The complement to space, the set of not stacks is very big, it's uncountable because we can see the circle which is continuum minus countable set. And then for any non stocks direction, we get a well defined basis. These homology classes of this left just timbles, uh, this local system sufficiently close. And even for the stocks direction, we get basis, but not one, uh, two bases. Uh, namely, I denote basis associated with theta and some index plus and minus. Oh, sorry, it's mis misprint. Uh, it's the same W. Uh, uh, this thing obtains its limit in the addict topology of basis uh, when I apply your stock direction by non stock direction from the left onto the right. And the limits uh, in addict topology will exist. And we call these things like kind of limiting non, non stock direction when you tilt a little bit from your stock direction to the left or to the right. What happens geometrically? You you have your kind of one point and suppose you get kind of wrong direction and you uh, your uh, gradient line uh, settle connection ends on another um, critical points uh, although it shouldn't end uh, they have the same stocks in this yeah so you get kind of get trouble so it's not a good situation this thing should shouldn't there should be no subtle connection at all if you rotate a little bit direction your trajectory in La Blue will start to rotate to the right. It will be kind of like infinite dimensional things which infinite things rotate to the right and take kind of limit of this homology class it will be uh, this um, unstable manifold with sigma minus. Rotate to the, to the left you get sigma plus. Yeah so you get kind of two different choices which differ by you see the by kind of like uh, stocks uh, uh, unstable manifold so to the second point. Yeah, now that's a basic geometry here. Yeah, so but in general, what, what goes on if you pass uh, through the uh, change parameter C and, and pass through the Stokes ray, we compare two different bases on the left and to the right on, on certain tube domain uh, on this middle homology. And then you get mm, two identification of vector bundle on a certain domain and you get canonical matrix valued series in many variables. Number of variables it's uh, you consider, for example, local system trivialized it and uh, it's zeros. So each one now of pair, it's more convenient here. And it depends on the complex manifold, one form and this direct stock direction theta. Now, so this trans, um, transition uh, matrix between two bases. Uh, this matrix coefficients are uh, certain functions in the tube domain or uh, of the cell break variety. Uh, this from trace local systems and um, so you can see the group algebra of this group uh, uh, and elements of this group we can sort of monomials so it will be like if it will be free abelian group it will be Laurent monomials and it will be in, in all Laurent polynomials and um, you get certain infinite sums of this uh, monomials. Yeah, yeah, so the six is something called stability structure on a graded Lie algebra. I will describe this notion tomorrow in more details, but uh, 
what here goes on. Uh, uh, what I claim is that uh, if cosmetic coefficients of these transformations uh, associated to the Stokes three, the, then uh, the metric coefficients are very sp special. Uh, monomials which enter here are those which end under the integration of form C to the exactly to this Stokes three. So you get some certain uh, sub lattice and my lattice, and here you have only special monomials. Yeah, so you get many, many, infinitely many, because there are infinitely many Stokes rays of some series, and how to encode them. Let us fix two Stokes directions which are sufficiently close to each other. Uh, then we get basis uh, for one direction, base for another direction. Uh, and uh, let's hope that they define still in some open, say, uh, some, this is a common part with a, some open tube domain VL defined. And then we can compare them. And the claim is that this transformation is ordered product of infinitely many transformations associated to stocks race in the interval from sigma 1 to sigma 2. Uh, so, so it's infinite product of some transformations and factors are ordered by every, every dense of numbers in this inter interval sigma. And this, the claim is that this decomposition determines this, oh sorry, TC t, 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 t uniquely from the total product. And the same, yeah, in fact, the whole story is sigma 1, sigma 2 can be considered as limiting non Stokes rays. Yeah, so the picture is roughly the following you get some angle sector, you get two directions, and infinitely many Stokes directions between them. It's like rational directions everywhere dense. And you compose the whole transformation, the product of whole things. So the uniqueness of the decomposition is a very basic universal property, which is central in the whole wall crossing theory. So it's, let's can describe it abstractly. Suppose you get a finite rank lattice. Okay, so it's this first homology, and with some additive map to complex numbers given by integral fun form, and some strict convex con, convex con, which comes from some complicated study of geometry of convex cones, which I discussed. And assume that uh, the image of the map uh, to R two uh, of this convex cone is a strict angle sector given by some inequalities. So, uh, uh, so the cone map to this sector between sigma 1 and sigma 2. Now consider some Lie algebra graded by um, sub semi group of the lattice. Gamma intersect with convex cone. It's arbitrary Lie algebra. And we have now consider instead of direct sum, consider of infinite product because it's three cone, it's uh, still well-defined thing, you get pronil potent Lie algebra, and we have a pronil potent Lie group, as source pronil potent Lie algebra. And for each direction theta, one gets a certain subgroup, namely we take product of elements G gamma, such that uh, the image under the map goes to this direction theta. So you get infinitely many subgroup. And the whole group, because for each vector gets some non-zero vector, here you get the whole Lie algebra is a product of this infinitely many subalgebras. And then that's a very easy fact that any element can be written uniquely as an ordered in theta product of elements of this corresponding subgroup in a unique way. And this is uh, what's going on in our situation. So this Lie algebra I'll maybe describe in details uh, next, uh, uh, next time. So what I want to say is that you know, to describe this transformation associated to uh, stock direction in certain sector it's enough to have just one group element in some group. And I'll just finish my lecture with some simple calculation. When one can calculate this element in certain example, it will encode all these transformations, canonical transformation at once in one uh, nice formula. Yeah, so I start with this is a case when my manifold has complex dimension one, it's a curve. And if I have one form and have interesting zeros, I should have curve of genus at least two, with a billion differential with two G minus two simple zeros. So it's automatically holomorphic Morse. Yeah, such actually pairs curve is uh, a billion differential with simple zeros is well studied in a uh, theory of flat surfaces. Actually, its origin is a Morse knock of theory, in fact, uh, with Anton Zorich. Uh, yeah, and this, um, all the space is actually domain in algebraic variety, but it's analytically uh, by period map. When you go to 
common class of one form, similar to previous we considered before, identified with the domain in a complex vector space, third dimension for G minus three. Abelian differential defines a flat metric with singularities at zero. The total angles is four pi instead of two pi. And uh, uh, especially a nice case is that when the period maps belong to the ring of Gaussian integers. So it's real in imaginary part of file has integer periods. Then the remaining surface can be cut in finite collection of flat squares of size one by one. And Stokes direction, this case, which are uh, angles with rational slopes, uh, the tangent of uh, function of angles is rational number up to infinity. And I'll present the calculation of change of basis for between two tilted non stokes direction. It goes from zero direction slightly tilted to positive and in vertical direction slightly tilted to the right. And there's some simple, simplest non trivial case of genus two square tile surfaces which have four tiles, it's the minimal number. Mm. The idea is the following. I just uh, go to this basis uh, 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 on first homology of universal local system uh, using uh, uh, left symbols associated to almost horizontal and almost vertical directions and consider change of coordinates. What is the surface? Yeah, I can, I can maybe draw genus to surface, but it will take for me the whole day. So uh, I can describe in the following way. It's glued for four squares, one, two, three, four. Uh, and there are uh, something like eight edges. You glue edge E5 here, for example, which edge E5 here. So you glue edge to edge. And it has only two vertices, P1 and P2, but two zeros. Uh, so you can glue, if you glue all these together, you get genus two surfaces. And uh, inside, I put some symbols A, B, G, C, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it will be holonomy of local system trivialized at vertices. Uh, it this local system depends on five parameters. It's called B, A, A, B, F, G, S. And the group ring is a group of Laurent polynomials in this letters A, B, G, F, S. Uh, so this non-Archimedean tube domain uh, is uh, uh, given by seeing that relation for each, uh, you can see the expression for each edge uh, is, uh, has positive relation, so it's some, uh, some kind of small number in non-Archimedean field. Uh, yeah, so if you get, uh, so it gets certain huge domain and for this uh, tube domain, um, if you consider left symbols for its arguments from between zero and Pi over two, so you start to draw in these things go from uh, the left bottom corner, left bottom corner, go somehow in positive octant. It will be a uh, uh, local system will kind of contract in this direction, so you get a well defined um, convergence property. Uh, uh, yeah, so so we get this, but uh, let's forget about uh, this tube domain first. Let's try to see what a homology coefficients is homology coefficients in the local system. You should write what's the differential of edges, uh, cells, of vertices is zero, and it's very very easy to see. For example, consider like edge E two. Let's go. It started vertex P one, but end in P two. But here should will holonomy A S. And then the differential before the differ boundary of HP2, it started P1, and at P2 with holonomy S, P1 minus S, AS times P2. And similar thing you write for the squares. If you have like, like square one, you have four boundary point edges, and uh, they put alternating sum with certain coefficients coming from holonomy. Yeah, so one can easily analyze these things. You get uh, a very nice kind of matrices uh, for differential. And so on. Now we have a left symbols coming from emanating from, let's say, vertex P1 with a direction which is horizontal and a little tilted to the right, to the to the left. And what is it? It's some kind of infinite chain. Uh, and uh, it's a left symbols. It's two stable manifolds. It's if you abstractly write my point on the surface. It has this, this have this picture. Uh, this left symbol is a union of two rays. But uh, two rays are oriented in a natural way. And if you consider line going from the left to the right, it's is orientation. It's, uh, my, uh, this thing will be a positive sign. This thing will be the negative sign. So you count these rates with certain signs. So now what is the rate T2? 
plus. Uh, say, say it starts in the southwest corner of square one, and p1 plus starts in the right square corner of um, square three. Let's go to the picture, original picture. This p1 in the uh, southwest corner appears twice. You see in one and three. And if you start ray at point one, and go, it will be uh, one ray. And, and, and here is part point three, get another ray. And then you can try to, to follow uh, uh, what, what goes from if you start ray at one. If you again you look to your original picture, you see that vertical side E5 glued from the left to the right, so it's glued to itself. And what happens if you go to almost horizontal direction, you return to the same square one, and then again you return to the same one, and and the wrap many 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 times. And the contribution for the stimulus will be some of geometric progression. You get this uh, almost edge uh, um, E3, then H is multiplied by A, by this monodromia, my local system, then by A square, you take sum of arithmetic progression, you get one or one minus A times three. It may, it's converges in addict topology of A small. And similar, if you consider other array, it starts to travel from uh, square three, then two, then four, then again three, two, four, and you get uh, uh, um, um, H E two repeated infinitely many times, and H one repeated infinitely many times, and, and so on. Um, and, and you get three arithmetic progression. You get this guy, and then you take the total sum. Uh, you get the sum of all your uh, timbles is this nice expression. Yeah, so it's um, first convergence in the skewed domain. Uh, when you divide in denominators is one minus some small numbers. And uh, you get homology class in, and it's closed on the differential. One can do the same ex exercise for second point and almost horizontal, get another expression like this. And then I form a basis, uh, so I get two expressions and uh, which are closed elements on the differential and the form a basis at generic point in the model space of local systems. And you see that uh, in this formulas we get depends on only on variables A, F, and S. I have five variables and here use only three variables. Similarly, one can draw vertical directions, uh, almost vertical things. One repeats this uh, calculation, it's very tiresome, but one can, another basis, uh, depending on closed chains, which are linear combination of uh, edges E5, E6, E7, E8, which correspond to vertical direction and coefficient depending on B, G, and S. And other letters. Yeah, so what we see, we have two bases in the rank two bundle, which is kernel of uh, one operator, model image of another operator. And both bases are given by rational functions in five variables, A, B, F, J, S. And if you can see the change of base, you get a rational matrix valued function. And I cannot do it myself. I use uh, computer algebra. And the result is this matrix uh, uh, related to limiting non stocks directions. And the matrix is something like this. Pretty complicated guy. And, and then we should decompose this matrix in the product of matrices of all possible stocks directions. Um, then they get contribution for all this countably many stocks rates for rational numbers. And this is purely algebraic procedure. So a computer can do it for you. Uh, this is very easy uh, to write a computer program. Namely, what's this? You get this matrix depending on parameters and you can see this product, it decomposes in the product of order product of matrices with coefficients in this uh, ring which encodes some tube domain. <laughs> this relation of A and B are positive. Yeah, this expression suggests encoding of tube domain. And, uh, and the factors are labeled by rational numbers between zero one. And for each factor, mm. uh, uh, associated to rational number depends on F, G, S, and specific combination A to power P, B to power Q. And this factor will be T associated to corresponding direction. Yeah, so one can, uh, what you do in computer algebra, you first truncate the series up to very large powers of A and B, so you get uh, truncated series. Then I consider monomials 
a to some power b to some power and extract the smallest possible uh, ratio of p divided by q and divide by uh, get get this uh, t theta for minimal possible c to divide by this again extracts smallest possible ratio of exponents get another t theta and so on yeah so it's uh, inductive procedure it gives you two things yeah yeah so it's one gets something and it looks as a very specific calculation of a canonical transformations for a very particular example of variety x and alpha. But what is remarkable, and I'll explain this tomorrow, is that by this full crossing formalism, which I didn't explain yet, using this description of a very concrete example, one can obtain algebraic description for any other Riemann surface abelian differential, just by continuous deformation, not necessarily square tilt one. So it means that it's this uh, kind of Russian matrix valid series and a few other series encode everything for arbitrary, let's say, Riemannian surface. Oh, so that's the main message. Thank you. Okay. Hello? Okay. Uh, thank you for your very inspiring, but very challenging talks. <laughs> yeah. Let's thanks uh, Professor Kontevich again, and um, we hope to see uh, you all again tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. For second lectures. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>